Hey, good morning everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. This is going to be just a few minutes, hopefully just a short video, uh, primarily for the, the viewers that watch some of my sheet metal videos. And we're going to talk about how you lay them out or what you use to lay out your sheet metal. There's any number of things that you can use. Uh, you can use just about anything you want to, to scratch mark on a piece of tin. A lot of guys use magic markers because it's so much easier to see. But I'm all about the business of, of making a, a sharp, crisp mark as narrow as possible and I like to try to follow that line as closely as I can to maintain integrity of the, the shape and design and the tightness of my fittings. So what I've done, i put together a couple of things that are conventional and a few things that are non-conventional, a few things that are homemade, and show you just what I use to lay out my sheet metal. Obviously you can see there's quite a number here. Uh, this one here is currently in my toolbox. This one stays in my toolbox. This guy right here this is actually a pin vise. It's a very small craftsman pin vise. You open this up and this will slide in and out. It'll hold up to possibly as much as a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch replaceable tip. I'm pretty sure craftsman still has those. I don't know. Uh, this is probably for metal workers layout where you use your bluing compound you know in a machine shop and you use this scribe you know to, to, to make your marks on your blued material. It's also a dual pin vise. There's a second one on the other end too. This here just came to me not too long ago. I've not used it at all yet. Uh, it's in probably in a box of stuff, you know, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but typically you can find th stuff like this for pennies on a dollar at a yard sale. These, this matched pair right here is a pair of Sterrett, uh, Sterrett scratch alls. And the cool thing about these Sterrett, not only they're perfectly balanced, they fit your hands very, very well. They got a real neat taper and everything, and I'll show you why that in a minute, why that's important. The cool thing about them is you undo this right here and you can replace the tip. Actually you can go with anything of this diameter that's of a hardened material and then sharpen it on a belt sander to uh, a crispness of your own liking or a shape of your own liking and then just go ahead and use that. But uh, it's probably better to get the hard steel with the uh, the tips from Sterrett themselves. I use them very sparingly. Here's another, uh, another factory awl I like it because it's just that little bit longer, uh, but I don't like it because it doesn't have much of a taper. It was much less of a taper than that, and I've kind of slowly ground it down a little bit on the belt sander, but you can see the difference right here. That'll come into play, like I said, when you're laying out something, that's, something that specifically requires accuracy, and you just can't get all the way across the sheet of metal to, uh, to do it. Here's a Klein, Klein standard punch, or a standard um, a scribe. Uh, it's good. It's very durable. You can beat the fire out of it. You can poke holes in metal. Uh, you know, make a pilot hole. Uh, it's great. It's pretty much non-breakable. I've used this thing hundreds and hundreds of times over the years, and it never even broke the tip. But I do have to. It gets flattened out a little bit. I do have to touch it up every now and then. But it is extremely durable. Here's another one here. This is a factory uh, all. Uh, this is a Malco brand. This is one of my favorites, not for laying out sheet metal, though it does work fine for metal. Uh, but because of it dobs down so fat and then down to your point, it makes it a little more difficult uh, to use, you know, in, in accuracy because you have a tendency to miss being up close to your ruler without an exaggerated angle being uh, applied to the to the scratch hole. But this is my, one of my favorite tools for doing, uh, you know, residential or, or commercial service, either one, simply because this Malco all has a perfect taper from this nice big diameter up here, which is probably about three eighths of an inch, all the way down to a point. But I accidentally broke it off one time, abusing it, and so I had to grind it down so it doesn't have the perfect taper to it anymore. But this all here from Malco, whenever you're installing thermostats, and a lot of the buildings I'd be in, I'd have to install as many as 70, 80 thermostats at a time inside a school or whatever, you know. And that perfect taper allows you to go up to that wall and you can bore this in. You can mark your hole on your sub base and you can actually just bore this in by twisting back and forth and force it in until you get the perfect depth for, depth for your plastic anchor. And you just turn right around, thump, 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 thump it in, pick up your screwdriver, put your thermostat in place, and then screw it in. It's one of my f absolute all-time favorite tools. And as far as being nice and strong, and that's a re I remember that's how I broke this off. Whenever you're changing heat exchangers in a furnace or things like that, or aligning coils, if you had to change a commercial evaporator coil or, or a drain pan or uh, anything like that, and you've got the pieces of metal that just don't quite line up, all you have to do is just get a portion of a hole aligned, and you can sit this in that hole, and you can literally 
raise up, push in, raise up, and align those holes and allow you to use your zip gun or your, your uh, nut runner on a battery drill to go ahead and zip in your screws and everything. And one time, that's what I did. That's how I broke that off. I was trying to put too much force on it to lift up too much material for alignment and snapped it off. But, like I said, it's just a very good tool. Now, this is just... Um, some kind of a small, if I remember right, it was about this much longer and it was a tiny screwdriver, like a control screwdriver, and it got bent back and forth a few times, so I just went ahead and turned that into a into a makeshift awl, and it works fine, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just kind of neat, nice and thin, I like that. Here's a much older homemade one, I made all most of these here in the shop, just for the heck of it. Phillips screwdrivers work great because you don't have that wideness to, to deal with, but Phillips you can go ahead and grind those down. And again, it's not real good, or real desirable to me anyway, because of that uh, odd angle right there. I'd like a much longer tapered angle. But you know what? It works fine. And here again is a much, much older, old screwdriver. Uh, he at one time had a had a, a ferrule that went down over the top of here, and it's, it's, a, you know, it's kind of broken off and it's gone now. But it doesn't matter. This light duty now just laying out stuff in the shop, so it's great. Here you go, it had something very similar to this ferrule right here. One day I just messed around, I picked up an old bro broken bolt, chucked it up in a lathe and cut it down, drilled me a hole in the end that matches this piece of uh, tool steel that had knurls and stuff on it. I'd been using that as a, as a freehand layout, you know, for small projects. And so I, I decided just to make a bigger one out of it, make a handle out of that old bolt, that's like a 5 8 bolt. So I just Drill that out just a little bit, you know, where I got an interference fit. Press these two together, sharpen it back again, and I use this guy actually quite a lot. It stays here stuck in a hole on the on the workbench. And then of course the tried and true ice picks. Now these are true old authentic ice picks, and uh, if it weren't be so old and rolling around my toolbox, you'd probably see the name of the the ice house or the or the ice company, you know, that that usually gave them to you whenever you'd buy, you know, a bag of ice or two. This is my favorite one that I actually use now consistently. If you notice, it's longer than what this guy is here. And I've told you guys before, I'm somewhat vertically challenged. And so reaching across a four-foot sheet on a four-foot work table, you know, kind of get on my tiptoes and everything, you know, to reach out. And this really facilitates or really allows me to reach that area much, much easier. Now, this is really something here. I was cleaning around, digging up stuff, you know, and moving things around. And I found this one here that I made. My God, I made this thing 25 or 30 years ago. Now, what this is, this is, remember the, you always see the movies where the bad guy is holding a butcher knife and he's sharpening it, you know, and he's slapping on this piece of rod, everything. They call that a steel. Well, they're not sharpening them right anyway. They're just beating the, beating the edge of the knife up and everything by slapping them on there. It's supposed to be nice and smooth. But uh, at any rate, this is a, an actual <laughs> sharpening steel that just wore plum out. The serrations are almost completely gone off of it. And so what I did years and years and years ago, because like I said, I've always been sharp, you know. Uh, but years and years ago, I converted this by putting it on the belt sander and then sharpening that down and made a very nice, uh, very nice far-reaching scratch all for me on the work, uh, the work benches at work and here at uh, my own shop. But uh, I was really proud when I dug that out. It's like, holy cow, I forgot about that thing. I hadn't seen it in 15 years, I don't think. And now in the order that I do not prefer... Are, uh, are my Sharpies. Now, I gripe about Sharpies all the time, you know, because it just makes too big of a line, too wide of a line. But uh, I'm not telling you that I don't use them because I do use the Sharpies on job sites. If I'm getting into to tie into an existing piece of ductwork or to cut off an existing plenum to put my plenum adaption on, I'll use these guys to go ahead and mark that. But this is the one that I really prefer because it's got a very precise and thin very precise and thin line and up against a straight edge a square or an S or a driver whatever it gives you a good crisp line if you just cut dead center uh, with it this is the second one uh, this is an actual Sharpie brand that first one is actually a Bic Market it's a fine part per point fine point Bic Market and this is the actual Sharpie but if you can see the actual Sharpie, yeah, Sharpie makes a, somewhat of a thicker line and it's still not too awfully bad it's still fairly accurate um, and these actually last longer than what those do because when I use them on a job, usually the ductwork is all nasty and dingy. Uh, it's got uh, oxidation on it and everything, you know, a lot of basement dust and everything. So it has a tendency to, to wear the tip down really fairly quick 
on uh, on the little fine tip one here. So in that regard, this actually works better. But I still use this one primarily on the job site. Then the thing that I absolutely just totally detest, and and I appreciate those that that do use these. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I just in particular don't care for it. Uh, you can see the size of the tip is just absolutely incredible and I'll try to make it a, a, a narrow mark and this one's about wore out because it's probably eight or ten years old it's pretty much dried up on me but hopefully you can see the size you can see the size of that mark that's about three sixteenths of an inch uh, width you see what I mean that's less than a sixteenth and that's between a sixteenth and a thirty second so uh, I still prefer the smallest one the best so these are real good you know if, if you just have to mark something that has to be visible has to be seen but as far as laying out in the shop I just won't use those at all you know doing these videos is kind of fun um, you know I don't know everything there is I know barely enough to get by doing my segment of the industry the way I do it um, but it's always interesting to me some of the comments that I get I get a lot of supportive comments overwhelmingly supportive comments I get a lot of comments from from guys that are really interested in the the different things uh, a lot of guys question a little bit about math and things like that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, there's questions about the tooling and or tools and stuff. And, and I enjoy that stuff. It's just kind of fun, you know. Uh, but it's just really unusual how many people have actually commented and requested information on my little scribe. I know I kind of highlighted it in one of the past videos. But now, this is another thing here I'd never really touch base on. Uh, you see guys sometimes uh, in the videos will use these guys right here. And it's fine, it's, it's reasonably accurate, but you find yourself continuously adjusting in and out. When you do your quarters and you do your halves and you do your uh, one inch, then all of a sudden you need your quarters again, where you're always adjusting back and forth. And the more you put adjustments on it, the more you've got an opportunity to make a mistake or make a little bit more of a, a length on this notch or that notch. And also, this is a, a plastic one, you know, it's adequate but it's not the best in the world but I, I just don't use them at all I played with this you know for about a year and uh, I, I discarded the idea and went back to most scribes but at any rate I hope that answers any questions so that's the end of this one hope it uh, hope it helped y'all and this is Trackman 44 and I am out of here guys